Scott, you're five way. All right. Can it be as simple as Mike Tomlin as a dog? <laughs> We're going with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Tomlin has a dog 5-0 and ATS this season. But he's not just an underdog in this game. He's an underdog with a really good team. So I looked up how do 10-win teams playing against other 10-plus win teams do against each other? Well, if you go back to 2012, it's it's like 50% ATS. But more recently— I, I think 10-win teams against 10-win teams is certainly 50% ATS. Yeah. <laughs> Give or take. <laughs> no. But if you, if you look since 2021— the underdogs in a matchup of two double-digit win teams, 22-16 and 16 against the spread. And when they're north of a field goal underdog, they're 16-10 and 10 against the spread. But specifically for this game, let's talk about how it's going to play out. The Steelers on offense use play action at a top-five rate in the NFL. The Eagles' defense has allowed the lowest yards per play and have generated the fourth-most fourth sacks going against play action. So Eagles' defense should be able to stop the Steelers' offense there. Philly, on offense, they're running the ball with Saquon out of motion more than any team runs the ball in the NFL with their top running back. The Steelers' defense against motion runs, second fewest rushing yards per play and the lowest EPA per rush. Big loss with George Pickens not being there, so I think it'll be a similar approach as last week with more runs and less down-the-field shots, which is actually good going up against the Eagles secondary, which is the best in the NFL. But the real advantage I think the Steelers have in this game is defending against Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts scrambling at the highest rate in his career, but he's also being sacked at the highest rate in his career. The Steelers have only allowed nine scramble runs this year. That's eight fewer than even the next best team. They've defended Lamar well. They've defended Jaden Daniels well. Both those quarterbacks didn't have a single scramble in the games that the Steelers played against them. Pittsburgh will contain Jalen Hurts. I think this is a low-scoring game. If you're giving me an under game, I'll take the five and a half points with the Pittsburgh Steelers in the Battle wow. of Pennsylvania. I mean, your whole handicap points to the under. Yes. So why not make that the Because play? I think the under is baked in. And I think that people are, are expecting a low scoring game. And I think the value is on the five and a half rather than the 41. Okay. So just looking at the last four weeks again, Philly's defense uh, overall second best behind Seattle. And if you look at the rush versus pass, you might say, well, are they better at the rush? But number two against the rush, the Eagles are. And then against dropbacks, as they say, the Eagles are number seven. Pittsburgh, by the way, number one against dropbacks. Mm -hmm. So this is an elite defensive matchup. What's the current number, 42? Yeah, 42. I think yeah. there's a, there might be a 42 and a half out there. I like the under here. I, I, or I, I yeah. lean the under a I, little I, bit. I do lean the under. and in it, But like I say, in a low-scoring game, I'm getting five and a half points, mm -hmm. and I love that. And before you say, but the Steelers have the Ravens on deck. Distraction, distraction. Well, it's a trend I talked about earlier this season. Mike Tomlin, the game before playing the Ravens, 23-13-1 ATS since 2018. 10 and 3 ATS, including a win and a cover this year against Washington prior to facing the Ravens. Yeah, and that I, I think, you know, with Tomlin against Harbaugh, you've got enough years. This is one of the classics where you can start seeing patterns there. Fez, what do you think on this? Uh, look, also look up what um, Hurts rushing yards is. I, I'm, I'm calling it audible. I'm going to do the under for my one weight. Um, I think this is overwhelmingly good. I'm just looking at Philly. And they have a preponderance of high-scoring teams they played this year. 39 and a half Jalen Hurts rushing yards. I would look under. I would too. Let me put that as my prop bet. Okay. So Hurts under 39 and a half. I'm going to do. I'm going to do the audible. Kill my one way. I'm going to go under 42. I like that better. Uh, RJ, here's the teams Phillies played. So Green Bay, that was the game with the bad footing in South America. Yes. Atlanta, uh, New Orleans when they were healthy. Tampa Bay, Cleveland. They did play the Giants, so the Giants would be the one team that's an under team. Then they play Cincinnati, dead not over, Jacksonville, Dallas, Washington, Rams, Baltimore. So all their numbers should be skewed towards higher scoring games because they played Bengal and Green Bay type of teams. Now they're playing an under team in Pittsburgh without their number one wide receiver. I like under. Yeah, and here's the thing. I believe – that the under benefits from what I see as the Eagles going to be really strong on one, one wanting to run the ball. I don't think they're going to run it great, 
but I think they're going to want to run because here's the thing. Hurts, when he is in a must-pass situation, so it's no play action, no RPO, he's got to pass the ball. He, by different metrics, he's like in the in the high 20s as quarterbacks, like 27th, 28th. He can, when he if it's third and 12, he's not very good at this point. You know that's how he was a couple years ago. Remember that Tampa Bay game, not the game that was close, but the year before that when they kind of got, it, you know, it was it hurts looked like he was limited. Right now, it feels like he's limited. Right, so if the Eagles run the ball and they have some success, that's just going to be a, a rock fight. And I think what happens is Pittsburgh gets comfortable not throwing a bunch of loopy, you know, fifty uh, fifty balls downfield, mm-hmm. right? Because you do that if you're down ten, if you if it's within three points. So I do think this will be low scoring because I think, and I would listen. It lost last week, so I think it's. I like going with it if I still like it. I think Saquon over rushing attempts makes a lot of sense mm-hmm. here. We could also, uh, as a bonus, I like that RJ. We could look at um, Steelers first quarter plus a half. Remember, the Eagles are two and eleven, the worst yeah. in the NFL in the first quarter spread. But remember, Pittsburgh's bad in the first yeah, half. Yeah, I was about to say both Philly and Pittsburgh have both teams have not scored an opening drive touchdown this season. Oh, so do we? I mean, do we look under first quarter? It's seven and a half. If you, you look think- at the EPA per play just in the first quarter, this is the second and third worst offenses in the league. RJ, are we sure Tomlin's not going to go for two? <laughs> he screwed me well, when's before. The, he, when's the last time he went for two in a weird spot? It must have been. It must have cost me my bet because I still remember <laughs> it. <laughs> now, now, um, how's the? Give me the uh, first quarter defenses for those for Philly and Pittsburgh. Let's see, because this is interesting. Uh, so, by the way, as he's getting that, if you look at the defense you know, again for the whole game, uh, but we're talking since week ten, Pittsburgh's rush because we said they're number one. Against the pass, Pittsburgh against the rush. Oh Lord, oh Lord. Number twenty-four. Number twenty-four. I think the Eagles run, run, run. So first quarter defense, Eagles are tenth, and Steelers are eighteenth. Okay, not average. Yeah. Not, not any better than their overall yeah. statistics. Well, or, worse yeah, than overall, overall statistics. Hey, AJ Brown's probably going to get a screen pass for the on the first play of the game because the the squeaky wheel and he's complaining so much. Okay. Well, how? I mean. Do they have first catches now? They have first drive uh, over under, right? They 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 do closer to game time. By the way, first drive result punt is plus one thirty for the Eagles. They have the highest punt rate in the NFL on the first drive of the season of the of games. Well, that, and that's an interesting way to get at. What is the t- all right? Find another favorite that is in you know above three, below seven. All right. So let's say Kansas City. Well, uh, yeah. How about Can- the the Bengals minus five? That's perfect. Okay. What is their punt chance first drive? Because if it's the same, I Bengals love it. punt is plus 155. See? And that's plus 120? Plus 130. 130. Yeah, so it's accounting for it. Yeah, Eagles it like going – teams teams like going for it fourth and one. By the way, A.J. Brown to catch a pass first drive, minus 110. Up I like that. Now, what's pick another great receiver and see with a similar total – I don't track those. I don't play those props, so I don't know what the. I, so Justin I, Jefferson, for example, is minus one forty. Okay. Oh, so it is in Preston. Yeah, Jamar Chase is at uh, minus one fifty five. Okay, hmm. then I like that. Yeah. Do, All right. do they do they throw screen passes to Brown? Not really. No. <laughs> that might yet, that, that might be a little bit of a complicating factor. Yes. <laughs> There's that. 